Welcome back to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. You search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Happy Friday, everybody. Glad we almost made it to the weekend. Hope you're enjoying the end of your week and get ready to have a wonderful weekend here in the A. Give me a follow on Twitter at Mark Zeno. Of course, follow us at Locked On ATL. Check out all the great shows we got here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. It's Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, ATL Day Ones with Jarvis Davis and Trinita Ratiste. Our Braves postcast returns. Tonight, after the Braves take on the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, which is way too long of a name. Just say the damn Angels. Uh, and, of course, locked on Falcons and locked on Hawks. And let's talk about the Atlanta Hawks for a minute because something dawned on me. Um, you know, I, I often listen to sports talk radio from various different outlets in the country, national otherwise. And it's just, you know, as somebody who's been in this business a really long time, uh, I always like to check out and see what everybody's doing. That said, I heard a conversation on a national radio show about the Golden State Warriors uh, and what has separated them from everybody else and what makes them so good. And one of the things that was pointed out to me uh, in listening was that the Golden State Warriors are the pinnacle of scouting and player development in the NBA. They do it better than anybody else. And it's the reason why they have a uh, – they have built – a, a, a dynasty. And speaking of built, this segment brought to you by friends at Built Bar. You'll hear from me about them in a few minutes. But they built the dynasty. And uh, I wanted to, I went back and I wanted to go over some of what they had, right? So if you go back to their first championship year in 2015, 2016, and bear with me here, just this will take a second. Um, but, you know, they had Curry, they had Clay, and they had Draymond Green, right? Those are the three sort of cornerstone pieces, you know, and the other pieces that they added to the roster at this point in time were uh, Harrison Barnes, Andre Guadalla, and Sean Livingston, right? And so they go out and they win the title. The next year, they acquire Kevin Durant. But they also, uh, and then, by the way, they lost the title that year. That was the 73-9 and nine year that they lost to, uh, to LeBron James and uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Under the radar, they got some guy in the 2016-2017 season named Kevon Looney. Hmm. 2017-2018, they pretty much ran it back with the same exact roster. A couple of really, you know, fringe pieces here and there. But, uh, you know, they, they win the title. Uh, and then, again, uh, you know, they, they, they run it back with Durant one more time. Uh, and they're good, right? And so, you know, when they lose the title um, in in – 2018 2019 uh that was the year that kevin durant got hurt and everybody had got hurt and clay got hurt and they lost to the raptors the following year they were really bad okay uh and in that year they had no well they only had steph for five games they had no clay thompson but they made two under the radar moves one they acquired andrew wiggins and two they found jordan pool right now kevon looney andrew wiggins and Jordan Poole. And then the following year, after they were really bad, they went back to the playoffs again. They got eliminated in the, in the second round. And in that year, they added pieces like Gary Payton, Otto Porto Jr., and James Wiseman. Now, you go to this championship year, the names Kevon Looney, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Otto Porto Jr., and Gary Payton were critical, critical pieces of this championship team this year. Andrew White, uh, James Wiseman rather hasn't played a game yet in a uh in a Golden State uniform due to injury. But yeah, I bring all that up because well, it very simply, uh if you look at how they found talent across the board and developed it, even with Steph, even with Clay and even with Draymond Green who were there since 2015-2016, they've been here for the last 6 years. They've been on this roster and they've been playing, and they've been the cornerstone pieces. But look at the pieces that they added around them. They built a championship roster with all those pieces that they added. What is the common denominator here between the Golden State Warriors and the Atlanta Hawks? You know what that is, and I'll tell you here in just a second. First, a word from my friends at Bill Bar from the people who invented the healthy and tasty greatest protein bars out there comes the latest gift to your taste buds. You've probably tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk built bar, but guess what? Your friends have built have given you the coconut brownie chunk 
bar, the puff street. And you've heard me tell you about the puffs, you know, the marshmallowy protein goodness. That's right. The coconut brownie chunk built bar flavor you'd love in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered 100% real chocolate, fluffy like a cloud and coconut brownie goodness. Stop drooling. I know. Just listen. They're good for you. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and delicious. And they're here for a limited time. So go to Built.com now to make sure you don't miss out. They're going fast because they taste amazing. All Built Bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Guys, I have Built Bars as part of my daily regimen, whether it's for a quick snack, uh, an in-between meal, something to hold me over dinner, or even a, a after-dinner snack where I'm craving something sweet and it's late at night and I don't want to stuff myself with something bad, It the Built Bar is the way to go. Go to built.com right now and use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 at built.com. Obviously, the common denominator here is Travis Schlenk. Now, Travis Schlenk is the guy who has been credited with finding Draymond Green in the draft, right? Like that that's his sort of claim to fame here. Well, um, I asked the question, where is the Hawks level of scouting and player development? I mean, is it fair to ask that question and think that they are slacking in that department? Because let's just go over the short track record here, right? I mean, you don't have to think really hard. Who have the Hawks really developed? Well, they developed John Collins, but they want to trade him. They developed Kevin Herter. They already did trade him. DeAndre Hunter, underperforming. Cam Reddish, traded, gone. Now that they're struggling to put together a roster, it's like those pieces, particularly when you look at Reddish and Hunter, who are high-level draft picks. The Warriors never really had high-level draft picks, except for the year that they were really bad when they were able to get James Wiseman, who, by the way, never played for them yet. Um, other than Other than that, they were drafting at the back end of the first round. So who have the Hawks developed? Trey? Well, I think Trey was already developed. He didn't really need much developing unless you want to talk about his defense, which is very underdeveloped. But in reality, like, who have they developed? If Travis Schlenk was brought here to make this the Golden State Warriors East and build what the Golden State Warriors have built, well, maybe, and I don't want to upset Hawks fans here, maybe, that's part of the problem. I, is it fair to ask? And I ask all these questions. I've been asking a ton of questions about the Hawks because I don't really know the answer. You know, a week ago it was, you know, uh, is trade more the problem than the solution? Is his attitude more the problem than the solution? And now I'm sitting here wondering about Travis Schlenk and how good of a talent evaluator he really is. Why? Because nothing has changed. Minus a playoff series win against the Philadelphia 76ers, if they don't beat the Sixers and get to the Eastern Conference Finals, we have an entirely different viewpoint of all of this. If Joel Embiid and company didn't stink, if Ben Simmons wasn't such a wuss, we are having a completely different conversation about the Hawks. And the problem is, is you can't let that one thing jade you to objectively what is going on with this team. Right? You, you cannot... In an adage that, uh, you know, guys in their 20s would understand, you can't let the girls' looks turn you away from what is really going on in her cabeza. You get my drift, right? Don't get fooled by that. Got to dig a little deeper here. And in reality, if there isn't one series against Philadelphia that goes their way, they have exactly one playoff series win under their belt against Travis Schlenk, and he's been here since 2019. So he's going to, going in on year 1920, 2021, 20. So he's going in on year three. Four, three. Anyway, I'm just wondering where's the developed talent because I haven't seen it yet. Oh, maybe. maybe uh, 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 great. Okay. I got you. All right. Was Clint Capella a bad trade? No. No, not a bad, not a bad acquisition at all. No. Has it made you that much better? Like, you know, I think all these questions are fair. Until I see a different product, I think it's fair to ask these questions. And if you're not, 
you might be looking through things with rose-colored glasses or hawks-colored glasses, whatever you want to say. Coming up next, uh, the Atlanta Braves will start the second half of their season and a big test on the mound tonight. That's coming up next right here on A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast, search Locked On Sports Atlanta.